So to, today is the June edition of Amazon Seller Connect, North Texas edition. It looks, it looks like we have several, at least four new, five, quite, five quite, new people. Yeah, quite a, quite, quite a good number of new faces. Um, I, and I'm new to a lot of you. So. My name is Howard Lee. I am the principal of Coral 8. It's an Amazon consulting agency. Um, I am not here to pitch my agency but uh, really just to dispense some knowledge that I've learned about Amazon along the way. And also, well, that's, so dispensing knowledge is kind of the uh, launch pad for you guys to also, for those who do know a lot about Amazon, to also fill in the blanks for me. So we're here to help to develop a community, to build a, um, a collaborative environment that's uh, respectable, nurturing, um, something that everybody can come in. Take a few tips, learn, and, and go from there. Okay, so um, I'm also an active seller. I've been an active seller for six years. Very briefly, um, I personally have sold uh, $30 million worth uh, between me and the consulting agency. We are responsible for uh, almost $100 million worth of Amazon sales. Yes, there are other people that are more impressive out there, but um, that's just me. <laughs> um, so I'm still actively selling. Um, latest update with my account is actually, uh, it's, it's, it's been going through some form, turmoil over the last couple of years and the last two, three months has actually seen an uptick in my account. So laser sharp focus, really understanding what goes on in Amazon has led me to understand which products to stop selling, which products to continue selling. And uh, so kind of a live case study, um, I'm actually working on expanding my product line, despite the fact that rumors say that Amazon is saturated. So we'll see how that goes. I'll tell you guys, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, so sometimes we have round tables where we would freely go around and we kind of network, but today we're gonna to be focused on the first session about Amazon marketing, okay? Um, I, I don't know the level of expertise um, in this room. There's some who are probably more senior than others, more experienced, but um, so um, as far as basics, like how to set up an account and stuff like that, um, I'm not gonna cover that. So I'm gonna kind of jump somewhere in between and then we'll just kind of go from there, see how far we get through these slides, wherever I stop, then next time we'll pick it up and go from there. Um, this is the first session on Amazon Marketing. I imagine this may extend for three, four, five sessions before we get a, a decent sense of what Amazon Marketing is all about. Okay, uh, so with that said, I'm just gonna go right in. This is my second time ever using PowerPoint, so if I mess up, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so, and um, this, and these slides might be a little disorganized, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, I think I'm gonna conduct things a little differently than before, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and eat. Every slide I'm gonna stop and ask for questions, okay? Because usually, I think with a couple of slides we've done before, I just rush through it and I think that ends up where a lot of people have a lot of questions and then they don't show up anymore and they fall off. So, um, so the, yeah, the whole purpose is not to go through the whole deck, but just to, uh, but I, but one thing, one thing I'll do is if you guys have a question that I think a future slide answers, I will objectively, it's not personal, I will say it's probably answered in the future deck and we'll go up. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So, so this is the outline, uh, or the first page of the outline. It's like it's like the table of contents for these slides. Um, there's a first little point: e-commerce mantra. Even if you're the first to market, even if you're the first to create cards against humanity, or I don't know, um, I don't know what's the latest greatest out there, but the latest you know fad in toys. Uh, second bullet point. Uh, to generate sales through your product page, it should have been dot, 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 but it's, the dots aren't this <laughs> vertical. Vertical. <laughs> uh, vertical. Yep. Anatomy of Amazon signals to shoppers on the search results page. Okay. So that's when you type in a keyword and you're searching on Amazon and you get a list of results. Anatomy, anatomy of Amazon signals to shoppers on the product page itself. Okay. So we're going to do uh, kind of a deep dive on that. Understanding market share. So uh, some of you who had come to the session about product research, we're probably going to do so a, a little bit of review to understand market share, how that works on Amazon, um, how that translates to opportunities for you. 
um, on Amazon. SEO, showing up in search results. Some of you who are in digital marketing, this sounds really basic and rudimentary, but we're gonna talk about the Amazon flavor or version of SEO. How to get organically ranked sounds easier than reality, okay? Um, I'll admit, you know, this stuff isn't easy, but uh, you know, this is helping you guys uh, unravel, you know, and try to organize your strategy as to how to market on Amazon. A deeper dive into product page optimization. So we'll look at um, a, a few products and their pages, and we'll go over some elements that we optimize on it. And finally, product photography. That's last. So some of these bullet points we may not get to today, but product photography is supremely, supremely important. Okay, uh, I put it last because it's it kind of follows the flow of how to naturally talk about these things, even though product photography is absolutely astoundingly important. Okay, uh, so that's the outline. I'm assuming no questions, we're gonna jump right in. <laughs> E-commerce mantra, even if you're first to market with a product, the higher your listing's competitive appeal, the easier and cheaper to market. Okay, so what that means is, if your listing is, looks better, shows up better in search results, the product page looks better. If you're developing a Roomba, and Roombas, no other Roombas existed before, right? You're the first robotic vacuum cleaner to market then it costs nearly next to nothing to market compared to your traditional Hoover vacuum cleaners, compared to, um, um, uh, maybe trying to think of other brand names, not Dyson, but Dyson's a premium. Yeah. So Dyson has high competitive appeal when it's marketing to consumers. So it's actually cheaper for them to push out there. Meanwhile, if you go to China and you just find any random factory and pick up even nowadays, you could pick up a robot vacuum because there's a lot of them on Amazon right now yeah. that are no name. If you just simply take that and try to throw it on Amazon, it's going to cost you to market. Okay, you need better photos, so it's going to cost you in photography. You need better packaging. You need a better end-to-end um, -end marketing process off Amazon. You need to um, present better offers to customers to buy your product, whether it's in terms of product inserts, whether it's your pricing. You need to spend more on ads. Um, you need to spend more to get more reviews when that market is reestablished. So that's why the higher your listing's competitive appeal, the easier and cheaper it is to market. Okay, and we'll get into that. That's these are just uh, broad summary points. Um, so with that said, evaluate your financial resources and skill sets to see if you can compete against the uh, the best seller or the top sellers or the field, the average field, in the niche you intend to enter. So, uh, you can have a competitive analysis. You need to understand your market before you enter. Again, you cannot just simply take a bottle of essential oil and throw it on Amazon and expect it to, you know, generate fifty thousand dollars in sales within two months. It's just not going to happen anymore. What is it? What is it about your essential oil that's more superior to everybody else? Now, there are um, ways to market it to uh, convert, but you have to be really good at it. So. Even if you're listening as a grand slam, you still need to implement marketing best practices. So, especially if you're first to market. Uh, just because it's easier to market, it does not equate to just throwing something up and going to, going to autopilot, okay? Um, reason being, uh, that's what I did for a couple of years. And I lost market share in a product that sold $500,000 worth a month. Um, I'm completely out of that market. I, I just threw it up, uh, didn't understand Amazon, and just said, hey, I must be good at this stuff. Turns out, well, 10,000 competitors later that are selling at half price, that I got decimated. Okay. And it was, it was when it was too late that it started, oh, maybe I should look into how Amazon works. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, so the product listing needs to assert itself and establish a deeper moat to save off competitors. So if you're first to market, <clears throat> do everything right, make a great listing, even if you're first to market. Um, um, if, you, if you establish that deep moat, uh, you could keep competitors at bay. So one of my products right now, six years in the making, it's in a, it's in a very specialized niche, and it, um, it's got about 4,000 reviews. Nobody can touch that listing. And I'm doing everything I can to keep that going. And that's part of my revival strategy for my account. So if you find a niche, um, don't be lazy. Do everything you can. There's a lot of work involved, but don't be lazy. 
produce a high quality listing. Yes, it's, it's better to just get things up and going that's half-assed, for lack of a better term, but do remember to revisit that and improve upon that as soon as you can, okay? Okay, so to generate sales through product pages um, is you need to get sessions to your listing. You need to get people to shop. You need to get you need to get these shoppers and visitors for coming on Amazon and figure out where your listing is. So visibility and traffic sources. So traffic sources is pretty much the search bar on Amazon. That's one traffic source, right? Uh, no tra traffic source are Amazon ads. Um, there's traffic sources off of Amazon. There's Facebook. There's Google. There's Instagram. There's Pinterest, and I can go on so on and so forth. You guys know all that, right? But those are traffic sources. Those are sources of traffic, and you have to funnel those traffic sources, those people coming through those traffic sources to land on your landing page. So I'm, I'm sure you guys know all that, but sometimes it just, you kind of have to step outside of the box a little bit and really think about that in order for click. How do we get those uh, people in, in who are already in, uh, in those traffic sources, coming from the traffic sources to Right here, listening, right? So if you convert more of these sessions to orders, conversions um, in Amazon parlance, it's user session session percentage. So that's it, right? Simple, conceptually. Um, so here's the anatomy of Amazon signals to shoppers search result page. Okay, so the key signals to shoppers are, let me see, do I have an example? Okay, sort of. So that's a Google search page, that's not an Amazon search page, it's sort of, okay. Uh, the key signals to shoppers are the image, the product name, the price, the product rating, and the review count. Product rating is, is it a four star rating, is it a four half star rating, uh, things of that nature. So review count is how many reviews does your product listing have? Is it two versus your competitors having thousands, right? Um, is it 500 where your competitors have 10,000, okay? Um, so mobile visibility, um, there's limited real estate, screen real estate um, on your mobile devices. So images is of utmost importance. And then also content length. So the product title, key features. Um, so this content may get cut off in mobile. So you need to strategize what you want to communicate to your customers before that content is cut off on mobile, okay? Um, there's a concept of above the fold. So 50% of conversions usually go to rank to the, to the listing of rank number one. 30% goes of, of, of total uh, search volume goes to rank number two. So this is kind of an example of that. So this is Google, right? This is a heat map of what people click on when they um, search for a phrase, men's running shoe. So listings number one and two get um, a pretty good number of clicks, and then these get some clicks, and then it just peters out from here. This is this is the fold right here, right? So that's the border of your monitor. So this is the border of my monitor. <coughs> There's content, potential content below from Amazon, but you're gonna have to expect customers to scroll down in order to find your client, right? So ideally, so I mean, in an ideal world, um, your the goal is to try to capture these organic ranking spots, okay? But it could be very costly, it could be difficult, okay? The other way to do it is to click, is, is here. So these are sponsored ads on Amazon. I'm sorry, not Amazon, but Google. So these are Google AdWords and Google Shopping Words. Um, and I might be a little bit wrong about that, but they're basically paid ads on Google. Mike, you could probably correct me on that. You um, have it right. It's just an updated format for it. If you're searching for a specific type of a product, yeah. it kind of recognizes, like if you were to search for trips to Spain, it looks not different. find the same thing as right. if you search men's running shoes. Right, right, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you do see that even, even here, the first shoe gets the most clicks, right? So ads work the same way too, as search results. But, but the problem with ads is, well, it's not a problem, but um, one thing about ads is uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a pay to play, so every click costs you money. How about the buy box? Uh, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. There's a heat map for that. Um, or a heat map talking about the product page. Yeah, I'll show that to you. Um, there's also something else called badges on Amazon. So if you get a bestseller badge, there's a 30 to 50% boost in sales with a bestseller badge. Um, 
there's also a 10% lift in sales with coupons, usually. Uh, coupons, let me see, do I, should I pick that up? Let's see, let's look for, this was a search term I was looking for earlier for a client. Coupons are these green things right here. Okay, so you can see for reishi mushroom, um, it's a it's a medium volume keyword from what I recall from doing research. But you only have one listing with this coupon um, above the fold. And I scroll down, scroll down. Oh, there's a couple more. Okay, I've never noticed those before. You don't shop enough on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I usually click the one that I don't. You click on the coupons, right? So yeah. Right. How do you get a coupon? You just set up an Amazon. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You set it through advertising. Um, it's actually one of the most straightforward things to do on Amazon, to be honest with you. Because this must be relatively new. Yeah, it's been around for two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Uh, I was stunned uh, talking to my client that, okay, there's nobody running coupons on Reishi Mushroom. And supplements are usually very saturated. So we are going to execute that. <laughs> We're going to include coupons. Um, so uh, briefly, can you just describe how a coupon works? It's it's generally... Um, the seller... So if you're a shopper, so if I click on it... Seller offers let's let's talk about the, sh the shopper standpoint, not the seller standpoint. So. Um, so if I click on this listing, right? That's a sponsor to add more than the coupon. Yeah. So then, oh, okay. So this is a this is a unique coupon, right? For subscribe and save order. So this, so I'm actually not talking about this, but there's a different kind of coupon where on that product page, there's a little box next to that coupon that shoppers have to click on in order to redeem it. Okay. Um, on the back end. Uh, you go to campaign manager and coupons. It's, it's right there. It's actually basically what it does is give them a discount. Yeah, immediate discount. Yeah, on the purchase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So five percent off. You'll get the five percent off. And you can set it in Amazon on the back end. Yeah. For, for as long as you want. And, and yeah, just uh, parameters. Yeah. Okay. So a few months right. at a time. Right. And does it cost you anything more other than yes. lost sales? You get charged per click. per click. Yeah. I think it's. I forget it's six cents, sixty cents, thirty cents, sixty cents, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you, yeah, you keep taking into account you're giving a coup, a discount as well. So yeah. right. <clears throat> and the minimum coup, the minimum, minimum discount is five percent. Mm -hmm. um, you can also give out dollar gifts, uh, a dollar amount as a discount or a percentage. Uh, they say dollar amounts actually convert better, um, but uh, I'm still kind of testing that out. Um, okay. okay. Uh, so one thing I oh, forgot to include in the slide deck is prevalence of ads. There's sponsored brand ads, product, sponsored product ads, and what Amazon strangely calls product ads or product display ads. Um, the ads are so these are this is the organic search results here, but for ads you get ads here on top. You get you see ads here, right? There's ads. Probably in the middle of these search results somewhere. Uh, depends on the product niche. Here we go. Yep, a whole row of Thank you. Um, there are ads inside a product page, so I'm going to click on the product page. There are ads below the buy box. There are ads. They're everywhere. This is why ads are really important. There's too many people that neglect ads. And um, where is it? Okay, so here's a row of ads. So that's what, seven places where ads show up? Um, there's probably another row. So another row of ads here. Okay, now this is below the fold, so sure, you know, that's gonna, that's, uh, you're gonna see, you know, uh, lesser conversions here. There's ads and emails. You guys will probably get uh, emails as to something you recently browsed for. So we get ads and emails. There's ads in the checkout page. There's ads when, there's just ads everywhere. Okay, uh, that's my VA. She's from the Philippines. I'm telling her good morning. She's checking. 
Um, so yeah, there's ads everywhere. Okay, uh, moving, moving on. Any questions about these, this, these high level points? Everybody understands? Hi. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, can you explain, me, what do you mean by prevalence? Prevalence? Yeah, like just understanding, understanding the distinction of each? Or? Meaning they're, they're just everywhere. So for organic search results, there's really only just the one key. Yeah, so when you, if you're trying to target for a keyword, right, there's only, you can only win one spot, right? right? That one rank for that one keyword, right? And there's other keywords you can rank for. But as far as ads are concerned, um, think of it as, think of it as a, as, as a missile with multiple warheads, right? Like you can launch a missile with multiple warheads and they can all hit keywords simultaneously everywhere, whether it's shown up in emails, whether the search is shown up in search results, product pages, everywhere. Right. Yeah. So that, that's what I mean by prevalence. They're, they're everywhere, whereas um, you can only show up once organically. Right. Yeah. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, moving on. Okay, so we saw that earlier. That's just a heat map. Um, anatomy of Amazon Singles to Shoppers product page. So um, this is about, okay, so 10 minutes. All right. Um, above the fold, right? Um, so if we look at the product page above the fold, there's images, titles, and key features. And find example of private label page heat map. Um, this is okay. So um, so above the fold, we see how the ti the title is where uh, a lot of eyeballs land on it. So is the so is the product image that gets a lot of attention, and the buy box gets some attention too, and stuff down here gets attention as well. Okay, so um, images are extremely important. Okay, and so is the title. Um, I will give you guys a quick tip. Some of you guys who are advanced, pretty advanced Amazon sellers, you probably know this, but um, you, but because of this pattern, right? You see how um, eyeballs are looking here and looking at the title. And it kind of fades with the buy box, but that's a conversion issue, right? Or a conversion, that, that's just the nature of conversions, right? Not every, so a lot of people window shop on Amazon mm -hmm. and you're not gonna get 100% of the people buying, okay? So, um, so one trick that um, may or may not be something that you guys know is that you want to orient whatever is in your product image to point to your product title because they'll look at the product title, and once they look at the product title, they'll look at your buy box. So it's a directional vector. So if you have a, a cup, I mean, that's probably a bad example. <laughs> but yeah, uh, something like you're selling these little sign holders, right? So you want to kind of orient it like that. Mm, okay. Or kind of angle a little bit so people can see that, oh, you know, it can hold a little sheet of paper, in, paper inside, but you would angle this top part to point to the product title. So you angle it something like that. Or if you had a pair of gloves or something, you'd have the pointer. Correct, right. You would have the finger pointer. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> the pointer, yeah. not the middle. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> the mobile perspective. Uh, kind of envision what that would, be, what that would look like. Yeah. So most, more sales happen on the app, right? And on right, right, absolutely. Um, you say more sales happen on the app than online now? Yeah. 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 That's nice. uh, so in the mobile fold, we've got product description, EBC content, uh, review content, at some of the ads, Q and A. So, um, so the primary focus is to really nail the product title, really nail uh, the image. That's if all things are equal: pricing, product reviews, everything like that. Okay. Um, I'll get into some more details about all these aspects, okay? But as far as this is concerned, at face value, this, does this make sense to everybody? Okay. So we got that. Uh, review of keywords and market share. Okay, so this is from a previous session, okay? So this was a product I was showing that uh, was a huge disaster for me when I was trying to sell it. but. Um, so for market share, we need to understand that um, this is the com this is this is pretty much the top level of the number of monthly search volume of mo monthly searches that we see on Amazon. 
for this product. So all these keywords added up. So when you add up the search volume for all these keywords, that makes up the total market share on Amazon. Okay. For that keyword? For that product. Yeah, for that niche. So you can see Nightlight gets 100,000 searches per month, which is actually really, really high. And then it just falls way down to 25,000, which is still considered really high, Nightlight for kids. And then right about, so, oh, so all the way down to Unicorn Nightlight, this is considered medium volume. Okay. Hey there. So, um, so if you if we were to sum up this number, this makes up the uh, the market the market share the search the total search volume on Amazon. And there's plenty of other keywords below, right? But this makes up the line share of the search volume exact impressions on Amazon. Okay. Where do you find this? You can find some tools. Uh, there's some tools you can subscribe to. Tools like Helio Ten. If you guys are familiar with Helio Ten. Um, or Helio Ten and other tools. Yeah, they can provide this. Yeah. How do you how do you differentiate what keywords what keywords matter here and some don't? So I wouldn't consider Plasma Vault to be important for market share as nightlight, right? So, I guess so you, make a decision, you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah, that's that's kind of another topic. But real briefly, um, there is a metric for relevance to determine if a keyword is relevant. Number one, number two, um, because we don't see relevance here, um, Plaza Ball, we we have to assume Plaza Ball might still be relevant because people shopping for a Plaza Ball may be interested in this type of projector. Right. So that's called audience relevance. And so if there's product re relevance. Where it's a one-to-one -one relevance, there's audience relevance where they cross shopping. Right. Um, there's uh, there's there's different levels of relevance. There's even substitution relevance, where somebody's looking for one product, but they're actually, uh, but a lot of people cross shop it with another one that's just very 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 different. It's not just even a matter of plasma ball is a lighting object that sits on a desk, kind of like a night night projector. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so kind of have to evaluate it from a relevance standpoint. Mm -hmm. To determine whether um, it's a keyword to cross out. Okay. Um, but when you're running an ad, if you're running, um, if you're trying to run PVC ads on Amazon, um, the first campaign, the first printed campaign I set up, I would actually probably dump all these keywords in and see which ones convert. Yeah, which ones get, which ones get clicks and which ones convert. So that's market share as far as keyword search volume is concerned. Okay. Um, so these are these are some slides that may be familiar to a couple of you. So here's a market with good sales distribution as customers are shopping well into the first page of results. So that's kind of wordy. So in plain English, what this means is take a keyword. So one keyword, any keyword, nightmare, right? It has a hundred thousand uh, searches per month. Okay. So this is so this sheet is not for light nightmare. It's it's for other keywords, but this is just an example. So you take the so we we would pick a keyword nightlight and we'd see we would see okay position number one two three four five rank you know how how many uh, conversions uh, result from that product being in a particular rank okay so we can see that even down to rank twenty four there's still people buying okay so um, so that's good sales distribution um, across. All the all across all the searches. Uh, I'm sorry, across all the results on page one. Okay. Is this software that you get, or is this something you? No, this, this is this is from a blog. This is from the from a private blog. This is not even software. Yeah. Um, I I don't. I'm kind of working on trying to produce data like this, but it's I've got so many other things to work on. <laughs> um, so here's a market where the customers are only are shopping only to the fifth result on the search result page. Okay, so we can see, so hot, cold, I mean hot, medium, cold, or this is actually cold, I guess, but it's so hot and then medium, and then everything just cools off, low data. Okay, so um, here's a market in which there are strong sales all the way to the 25th position. However, it's important to pay attention to the number of weeks a top product is found in each position. This is in case there's a lot of volatility in search results. Okay, so this represents a keyword where good distribution, but um, but say like if we're talking vacuum cleaners, like Dyson, one week would show up here, next week it would show up there, next week it would show, 
Do we got there? So here, so let's just jump in all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is probably in a niche where it's highly, highly, highly competitive, overly competitive, overly saturated, and every seller is trying to one up each other with very aggressive marketing tactics. Okay. So deceivingly, it looks like, oh, okay, you know, this looks like a good market to jump into, and then you get eaten up by the sharks mm -hmm. out there. Okay so, okay, so going back to basics, how to shop on Amazon. Um, this is going to sound stupid and straightforward, but a lot of times I think when we are in the um, seller echo chamber, we forget how shoppers shop on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And it's worth reiterating. I, I know eight-figure sellers who I have to remind them, this is how shoppers find your product on Amazon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they go, oh, okay. It's because I'm trying to explain a concept on the back end. And I go, this is how shoppers shop. And they go, Oh, okay, so that, that's why it makes sense. Yes, how'd you get to, how'd you get to eight figures? There's one guy who, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so traffic on Amazon. Uh, so there's two types of traffic sources, on Amazon and off Amazon. So on Amazon, we talk about this already, searches, emails that Amazon sends out to you because there's ads in them, right? Special landing pages like for lightning deals, Prime Day coming up, uh, holidays, um, different, uh, what do, you call, what, do you, what do you call them? Like superstars and Instagrams? Like Taylor Swift and influencers. influencers. Yeah, okay. Influencers, thank you. Um, okay. Ad, ads, other product pages, and devices. So if you have a Kindle where you bought the Kindle, um, so if you guys have ever bought, if you, ever, if you guys have recently bought Kindles, you can buy it with the ads and without the ad. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's hence the devices. Okay. Um, the only traffic on Amazon which may not be de dependent on searches is devices. So um, that's that's only for very, very high level sellers, so that's uh, not you know, going to be part of this discussion here. Traffic off Amazon, we've talked about this already. Social media, e email, QR codes through like product inserts, uh, Amazon retargeting, and etc. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. How many people in here know what a QR code is? Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Have I used one? No. <laughs> yeah. I did a, did you I did a scan on with your smartphone? Yeah, I did, a, I did a campaign with them and I uh, was actually surprised at the number of people that had like no idea what it was. Oh. Is that the one where you generate a code, like a bunch of code on like a spreadsheet? It looks like a UPC symbol, but it's like a weird it, it's one. Square, it's like square, a block. It's square, it's square. Oh, oh, it's and okay. when you open up your phone and Scan the okay. image. I It'll automatically it bring you Amazon. to and you are. Yeah, but I see yeah, other softwares. I only asked because I did a campaign with one, and nobody knew what it was. On an answer card? Uh, no, it was actually on the side of a vehicle that we used uh -huh. at uh, shows. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing for capturing right. solar leads, mm -hmm. and what it was was a link to where people could do. Uh, enter some basic information about how much they were spending on power. Um, and the idea being that, well, you know, I can just give people all the information they need on the phone. And this was in like 2010, 2011. Uh, they were early in the market. Well, I was just thinking about that. It's, 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 it's a lot of big problem right now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But like, no one knew what it was. Back then. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's all. Cool. Okay. Um, any questions so far? This is a new slide. Keywords, um, kind of what you sort of asked here earlier. So the keywords you want to target are the ones that have as high of a search volume as possible, but low any nine results, meaning lesser competitors, and they're considered to be top keywords. Up. So um, the highest priority or relevant score. Um, so you kind of want to look for when you're starting off a new listing. You want to target, okay. Um, especially when you do off Amazon marketing or PPC, you want to target these kind of keywords. You, know, you want to find that nice sweet spot between search volume, low, lesser or fewer competitors, but still have some sort of relevance, okay? Uh, next. SEO, show up in search results, okay? So again, this may bore the people who know Google by heart in this room, but... <laughs> Okay. I don't know anything. Yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> Not to be dangerous. Yeah, yeah exactly. You knew QR, QR codes before I was born, so. Yeah. 
Just call him Pappy. <laughs> You're always happy. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so yeah, uh, simple breakdown of SEO. Uh, gotta get you gotta get your listing indexed first, and then ranked. Um, probably the same as how it works on Google. So you need to be indexed for the keywords first before you rank for that keyword. Not indexed means the listing is not recognized by Amazon's AI engine, let alone shoppers. Indexed, but not well ranked means the listing is recognized by the algorithm, but not by shoppers, i.e., for example, being ranked in 300th place on page 20 for a keyword. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. And you're, you're referencing uh, Yahoo, or I'm sorry, uh, Amazon indexing, uh -huh. internal indexing and ranking, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if you were talking like an in general search engine organic indexing. Probably not. Okay. Yeah. That's probably different on Google though, in some ways. Well, I mean it's the same it's the same terminology, it's just a matter of oh. you know, what ecosystem were you talking about. Oh, okay. And I yeah. wasn't sure if you were still on like the larger net that you can cast. Yeah. Um, for uh, indexing on Google or Bing or, or Yahoo. Yeah. Um, or if you meant the way that you index within the Amazon system. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, this is the same terminology. Oh, okay. It's just a matter of determining what area are you focusing on. Uh, okay. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is, <clears throat> yeah, this is strictly Amazon, uh, okay. in the context of Amazon. Yeah. But one can affect the other though, right? So you can... I don't know. I don't have enough experience with how uh, the Yahoo, like Yahoo's organic indexing algorithm, what kind of an effect does that have on a page's ability to be indexed by Google? I'd love to know what the answer to that is, but I have no idea. Okay. So, or like Google. One Google. of the yeah, one of to try to answer your question, uh, it's well, it probably doesn't matter as much anymore. But back five six years ago. Um, People were wondering why I want to sell on Amazon when I could set up uh, my own e-commerce store back then. Yeah. And like an Etsy or Spot or versus Etsy, Shopify. right? Shopify. And yeah. the answer was Google gave exclusive juice to Amazon links over. Oh, over actually, Amazon. Amazon was one of the biggest purchasers of pay-per-click ads yeah. back in like 2002, 2003, 2004, yeah. and they actually purchased so many millions of dollars worth of ads that they've got their own complete rate schedule mm -hmm. for what they pay for pay-per-click ads as a sweetheart deal. But they really carried Google right. AdWords when it first came out. Right. They yeah, really that makes sense. 80% of sense. the ads were Amazon. Yeah. Is and, no. And so the consequence of that mm -hmm. is Google probably mm -hmm. gave preferential treatment right. even for yeah. organic yeah. Yeah. Google's yeah. organic yeah. Yeah. Regardless of what they would yeah. say. Right. You know, yeah. right. and you just pay right. for that. So, okay. so yeah, nowadays, if you set up your own you random index. WordPress site or something like that, I need to read you, yeah. you're going to have to start the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, the keywords yeah. in your so. listing. Um, <clears throat> Howard, he asked, how, how do you index for a keyword? And I'm just explaining. Oh, yeah. it's the, the beginning. I'm gonna, yeah, there's a slide about that. Yeah, later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How to get organically ranked. Get indexed first. Okay, so this starts answering <laughs> that question a little bit. So, Get index first, meaning, meaning you, you know, your listing has to be optimized. You have to do your keyword research, relevant keyword research. Okay, so second one, category relevance. You've got to get in the right category. That's not so much a problem anymore nowadays because Amazon will default you, will force you into a category, um, into a few categories. Before you could do some tricks with categories, but not so much anymore. And then, and thirdly, um, key metric is conversions. You got it. Um, well, yeah, that, this this third bullet point kind of falls between being indexed and ranking. You definitely need to get clicks, um, but if you can get a conversion, that also helps with indexing. Um, so then secondly, uh, you want to increase rank, so you drive more traffic conversions via more favorable keywords. Okay, so um, this requires using traffic sources. The more the merrier, such as PDC, Amazon compliant launch services, even friends. So social media launch lists only with those only for those with access to expert capabilities. So you can definitely launch in, on social media. Um, you can use launch lists, email lists. You can tap somebody like Mike to help you out. Um, it's it's not straightforward. Um, well, let me take that back. So it's it's not entirely you know it's not rocket science to do, but there are a lot of parts to put into place to set it up correctly. So um, 
But um, does this all help get your ranking higher up onto the first? Absolutely, page? absolutely. So that yeah, so that's why um, yeah, this is the whole point of increasing okay. ranking. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So so um, there are people who try driving traffic choosing the wrong keywords on Amazon because that keyword sounds nice to them because they're friends and then use that keyword. But if that, key, if that keyword only gets 200 monthly searches a month, that's nothing, okay? So, and, 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 and you know, and if, if, if they simply choose a keyword just because of the way it sounds and it doesn't get any traffic, and um, there's definitely better opportunities out of the keyword searches, then it's not gonna translate into, it's gonna be underwhelming. One of the mistakes I've seen people make is uh, going uh, based on cost. They like, go, oh, well, this one doesn't cost much. Uh, the product? Uh, the keyword. They'll pick a keyword PC. that yeah. has a very, very loose connection to right. what they're doing, but it's showing up on like a keyword matching list. Right. Cheap, they and they'll be like, 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 oh, this one's only a nickel to click. I was like, yeah, it's because there's like one guy in Egypt that clicks it. Like, <laughs> yeah, because uh, the ad option works on, what did they call it? The second, second wing process? But anyway, it's, it's an auction, right? Sure. Like yes. everybody, all the sellers are bidding against each other right. for the bid. So if there's a keyword, that's, yeah, the CPC is only five cents. It's a, it's, it's a conversation I've had with a number of people where they make the mistake of trying to go in and value shop keywords. Uh, and yeah. while I understand that you don't want to be wasting your money um, bottom feeding off of just the cheapest keyword, there's a reason why some of these things are so expensive. Right, right. So, so you showed keywords of about 100,000 a month. That was a what, what, that's really good. What's the bottom where you say, yeah, that's acceptable, like 20,000 a month, that's a good point, or 5,000 a month? It's relative to the product niche. It's yeah. relative. And, and to your competitors, what they're doing, right? Right, right. But you don't know what they're it's, doing. It's not a, it's, it's a sliding scale, because some niches, the top keyword gets 3,000 searches a month. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's relative uh, then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know some, I know even to this day some, high product volume niches where the top keyword or one of the top keywords only gets three to five thousand searches a month but it's it's a 100k 200k niche so if you do that so you maybe look at the top 50 percent of the keywords maybe and you, and you try, try to put your money in there so if 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 we want to simplify it we could okay but it's really trying to find an element that might rocket brought up so it's cost versus traffic, versus relevance, and then does that make sense to target? That's my methodology I use. Plus the use of metrics. Because yeah. you don't know, no, anyone who would be able, who would be confident in giving you an answer to that question right now is really only guessing. It's not until the campaign is in place and you track the metrics of how your particular campaign is resonating with traffic and generating sales. And if for another guy selling the exact same product you are, he might have different results because people are, it's a constant moving target. So the best answer is, is to keep track of your campaigns and make sure that the words that you pick are performing well. And if they're not, go back and do it again. And with those campaigns, see how it helps your organic ranking. Right. And yeah. how long are these campaigns usually? That's a, just a trial and error. Always. Always. Because over the first two weeks, three weeks, and then you do it again. Um, so they should be optimized frequently, but not too frequently. Yeah, they should be optimized maybe weekly. I would say um, a lot of people neglect that, but you know, I would say if you can even opt if you can even tune it monthly, that's better than ninety five percent of the sellers out there. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Is PPC the best method to kind of figure out the keywords? Or I know there's like different softwares where they have predictions of yeah. how often things are being searched. You know, Viral Launch has something like that. With, with what, yeah, exactly. So Viral Launch, so with what's, you probably, if, um, if, if you're mentioning that, you probably know that um, Amazon has closed a loophole for Viral Launch and these other tools to access search volume. So, right, so we're actually going back to 2015 now, where PPC is once, PPC again, is once again a key source. So these tools still offer an estimated search volume. What they're doing is they're extrapolating based on historic search volume. Like every year, you know, there's seasonality, right? And every year, Amazon traffic goes up, you know, incrementally by a certain percentage. So they're, they're still providing you the search volume, but it's not directly through the JSON hack that Amazon had open and they closed uh, a few months ago. So you can still use these tools, 
but at the end of the day, it's still PPC. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Moving on. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, keyword indexing. Okay. Product title. So, um, where do you put these keywords that you want to index for? So, product title gets top emphasis. That's straightforward. Um, the and that's visible via the front end, right? Or customers can see the product title. Uh, the five subject matter fields, this is back in only, also known, it was previously known as the, the, the source field. Okay, so when you log in through Seller Central, it's called, I think it's called subject matter fields. If you download the Excel feed, it's called the thesaurus fields, and it's only in the back end. Um, so search terms, so, you, so, I, so I created the slides maybe three months ago. Um, there used to be multiple search term fields, now there's only one, okay? Um, key features, so those are the five bullet, full points, five bullet points on the front end. So they get um, pretty heavyweight uh, for indexing. And then product description is visible via the front end and uh, that also gets indexed. So this, so product description previously was not indexed for organic ranking up until two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Now it's being indexed. But, the, but what we're trying to figure out is how much of a weight this product, uh, do, do the, uh, the words in the product description have to contribute to keyword ranking. But so far, these guys, these top four, they're the heavyweights. Okay, so product description. Um, so here, to, to increase indexing and relevance, repeat complete phrases. This may be applicable today. This may have been applicable up until a month ago or a couple months ago. This may not be applicable in a couple hours tomorrow. You just kind of got, kind of have to be on top of it. Um, one thing that's absolutely true, though, is do not. Well, okay, so this is the wrong word to use. Do not optimize your listing using competing brand names. Uh, the the field containing competing brand names will be entirely DNS by Amazon. So if you try to put, um, so if you're selling Dyson, if you are Dyson and you try to put the word Hoover in your listing, like say in search terms, then if you have multiple words in the search term field for um, other than Hoover, then that whole field gets, will, 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 Amazon will, automatic, will automatically not consider the whole field, okay? So be careful about competing search terms. Caveat, you can target brand names in paid campaigns though, okay? So if you're Dyson, you can definitely run ads all day long with Hoover. Okay. Uh, do not optimize using restricted terms. Um, there's no publicly available list. Not even if you go. Not even if you have a seller account. But um, there's. But just off the top of my head, there's probably things like um, you know. Just, just think about morally and ethically questionable words, right? Like um, there could be um, words pertaining to sexual products. Uh, there could be words pertaining to. I don't know, like uh, guns or something like that. Um, it's, cannabis is a big one right now. Yeah. Like cannabis. Yeah. 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 So on Amazon, on Amazon specifically. So can yeah. So there's a lot of products listing for cannabis and CBD, but their listings do not contain the words CBD right. and cannabis. They have to find ways around the yeah, very, hemp oil. It's they very all, tricky. They use right. hemp oil, yeah, right? right. Yeah. yeah. So hemp oil has some relevance to cannabis and CBD. Yeah. Um, for the front end, front end content, content, make it articulate for keywords which don't fit into the front end because it's not, it doesn't roll off the tongue easily, then butters the back end fields. So we got the back end fields there. Those don't show up in the front end. Um, any questions about that? Straightforward. Really? Okay, great. Wow. <coughs> expecting a bunch of questions here. Uh, okay, deeper dive into product page optimization. Desktop versus mobile, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Mobile traffic is now comprises, consists of 65% of the traffic. Desktop is now down to 30%, 35%. That flipped about two, three years ago, okay? But don't completely neglect desktop visitors though, because some product niches um, could still con convert very well on desktop, like office supplies. I'm just guessing. I, I don't know for a long time, but, right? Because they're nine to five in the office, right? Yeah. 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 Is there a correlation with uh, price? 
like lower priced items sell better on mobile? No, because like I can a imagine. television or a, a desktop computer, would that be something that people would buy on their desktop because they're doing more uh, research? I, I would. That's, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I would. Yeah, I think higher, higher priced items, people do more research. Yeah. And, and they do it research easier on the desktop. I don't make sure I don't miss anything on my small screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would too. So, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Just wondering what the conversion breakdown is between that 65 versus 35%. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, it can certainly depend on niches. Um, yeah, I feel like TVs. I would go to a desktop if I'm spending a lot of money. Yeah. So if it's a huge investment. Like a car, I'm not going to really shop for a car. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Tesla, you can just scroll and click on There's like three more. Maybe the. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you already know the score I do. You were locked. <laughs> a spatula now. Definitely so. Dude, dude, please do not get into spatulas. <laughs> uh, let's see. So this is a desktop version of search results, um, which is interesting. It's in a line by line format. But anyway, we see the main image, we see the product title, price, stars. Um, so you can see that, like, it's kind of it kind of flows like the product page, right? So people will see the image, they see the title, they see the stars. This and is the desktop they, version. This is oh. yeah. This is the desktop version. I, think. I feel like mine has. For some reason, I have mine set up where it's like I have like. Three on the page. I think this is like three months ago. That looks old. Yeah. It's all, it's all and it depends, wild now. And it depends on categories. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Really so, um, so that's just an example. Yeah, so this is a grid layout, yeah. right? But so as you can see, um, product image is very important. Product title. And um, and generally, uh, there's there's other things. So. Um, just to go over real briefly here, but uh, probably do a deeper dive. But um, the more the more content there is on the search results page, the more the eyes are drawn to it too. So having an MSRP that's crossed out and having a having an actual uh, sale price, having subscribe and save, this this draws more eyeballs to that listing. But what is up with this product image? Like you can't <laughs> even see what it's really all about, right? So, so they nearly hit a home run until you look at the product image. This one would be a very, very nice product image. Um, you can also see they kind of, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but they're kind of adopting the whole, you know, um, eventually pointing to the title, right? Bottom Going from left to right. It's bottom right line, obviously. Yeah. This one's, yeah, right, right, yeah, the little bolts, right, right. Um, the bolts themselves could actually be pointed this, mm -hmm. this way themselves, too. So this is a product detail page, um, great image. Um, you can see the product title. Seems like they did a lot of work keyword optimizing it. Okay, so it's readable, four bristle, four bristle tools created for cooking, baking, and mixing. Um, so, so this is a pretty solid um, title. Um, let's see. Good reviews. They have, the, they have good reviews, right? It's almost like perfect reviews for stars. Um, High number of customer reviews, good good product rating, high number of customer reviews. They have a badge, Amazon's Choice badge, that that's going to show up in different parts of Amazon. Um, you, they, how do you get the Amazon Choice badge? Yes. Uh, that's a good question. Gary, do you know the answer to that? No. Do, okay. do, you, do, do you know the theories behind that? I know. Can you okay. buy it off or you have to be buy for it? Or you pay for it? Amazon, Amazon says it's a machine learning determinations based on conversions. It's based on, so in the early days, it was based on um, how many times these this keyword was used in Alexa. Hmm. So people were hacking it by getting hundreds of Alexa devices and just day in, day out, wow. just saying, kitchen specialist, kitchen specialist, kitchen specialist. <laughs> Um, like and talk to each other. Right, exactly. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, they're recording them, so you walk out the room. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think lately there's actually a specific URL that you can build that would allow you to get uh, Amazon's choice. Or it's, I might be wrong on that. It, that URL may actually be an internal URL that Alexa issues in the, in the, in the back end as you speak to it. 
to make the purchase for you, or something like that. Um, so it's a combination of, um, yeah, it's a combination of Alexa conversions, sales, uh, product reviews, things of that nature. Yep. Yep. Not really too straightforward. Um, you can all see in, the, see in this listing, they have several images, right? They don't just have one, two, or three, they, and they also have a video. Uh, the bullet points are all filled out. Um, so yeah, yeah, you can see I took the slide back before Christmas, so um, it's an older format. Um, and this is where the fold is, right? Mm -hmm. So we barely see the ads. So those make it into what's above the fold. Um, yeah, yeah. How effective is frequently bought together? Because I personally never click on those because I never want them. Um, it's good for product research because you may, you may be able to deduce what other products other shoppers sell. Right. Yeah. You can run ads to their listing. You can do that as well. Part, part yes. Pages, yeah. You can do keyword research on, on these listings too. Yeah. 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 Any questions here? Yep. I got a question. So for the Amazon Swiss, uh, that is specific to the keyword, right? Not the actual product. Like say there's like this thing shows up on 30 listings. It's not going to have the Amazon Choice on all 30. No, few correct. Of Only one listing wins the Amazon Choice for a specific viewer. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So every time people order it through at Alexa, yeah. uh, they'll automatically get this. That's yeah. Only one of the sales are <coughs> so easy to get. Right, right. And oftentimes you'll see, um, so for kitchen spatulas, this listing may not be ranked in the first place in the search results, but it won the Amazon's Choice badge because of. Um, certain purchasing patterns that mm -hmm. favor it. Yeah. I think I had that for a little bit when a product was, I was low on inventory, so I was trying to split all sales, and then Amazon went in and put the Amazon's choice on it. I was like, hey, it wasn't common. And it actually blew up sales. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, yeah, it kind of pushed me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, it worked. Yeah, sometimes you can have issues being successful, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a good problem. It's a good problem. <laughs> yeah. I noticed on a product page for like, Xbox or Apple or Samsung, some of these larger companies, that there's additional layout options that they have for customizing the page. Is that the kind of thing that Amazon only makes available to these larger companies? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a pay to play kind of thing? You got to buy your way in on that? Pretty much. It's kind of like how you were talking about how <clears throat> Amazon bought a lot of Google ads. Right. And got their yeah, absolutely that. Okay. Absolutely that way. Yeah, there's, there's many, many different tiers beyond the type of plans that are available to us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm so, noticing for some of the larger brands that there is additional content that they'll have on their product page right. that uh, you don't necessarily see on other pages. And it does make you dwell on the page a little bit longer. Right. Because it's just, it's a, it's a different look. Yeah, yeah. yeah some, some of the pages have um, you could brand like this portion mm -hmm. of the background so for Apple, they can have like a semi-transparent Apple logo, mm -hmm. like behind the product title or something like that. They, they can, they have access to that. Okay. Yeah, we will never, yeah, we, yeah, we can't even dream about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your way, Howard. No, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe one of you guys. <laughs> uh, let's see, so this is on mobile. Are allowed to like embed some kind of HTML code or just some code into it? Or? You, you can do that in the product description, but it's a very, very limited set. You can embed B tags for bold, you can embed, embed P for paragraph. And I don't know, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. Just a little more dynamic content that you can embed it? Not anymore. No. Not anymore? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you have um, access to EDC, if you're brand register, mm -hmm. then in product description, you can have some of the visuals that Mike was sort of alluding to. to mm -hmm. Instead of just having text content in your product description, you can have uh, hero images and product comparisons and things like that. Yeah, But you have to be brand register if you have access to that. I mean, don't you need brand registry to even put videos, right? Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. right. right. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, let's see. So this is, these are examples of multiple search results. You can see that, again, product image. Um, so they, okay, so they did come up as the first, uh, in the top ranking for this, for this keyword. So product image, product title, pricing, 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much what uh, those are the key signals that shoppers go for. It's crazy the fold is, is three listings. Right, on right. Mobile. Yeah, okay. or on this particular mobile device, if the screen's bigger, they, they probably uh, have more um, show up. Now, so this is this is the mobile view, and you can see how, um, well, I guess all these have prime shipping and free delivery, but you can see how, for this listing, they have an MSRP. So because of this MSRP, this pops up. You save $24.01. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So this actually gives them a little more real estate to push down these results a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the trick is if you get more badges, okay, if you can get more data and information to show up on your search results, what you're doing is you're muscling your competitors go down bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. You're pushing them down for more and more, okay. And the sponsored ads are at the top pushing other people down. Right. See that? Right. Yep. Okay, I'm doing the same thing as you did, and I just have one listing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so here's another example Amazon Basics themselves. These guys are sassy. These punks. $15.99. Where else are you going to shop for it? Buy for $15.99, right? They're crossing it out, and yeah, they're trying to take, pull a page out of our. Um, oh, at our playbook. Yeah, this, this is an Amazon. Yeah, it's right available everywhere. So this fifteen ninety nine is that is that a if you're selling your own product, you could put your own. Yeah, you can make up your own MSRP. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Some, I feel like I, it doesn't always stick though. Whenever I put it in there, or I want to stay for a certain period, and then, and then for whatever reason, Amazon's like I'm not showing that anymore. Yeah. What, what, if, what if you start with that price and then you go down right away? So there used to be. I forgot what the terminology is, but. Um, most of you probably are aware of this, but uh, there used to be, Amazon would use, uh, previously would scrape the pricing off of other websites where you have product offerings like Walmart and stuff like that. So if your price was significantly different from Walmart, then Amazon will, it never happened to me, but they'll do something. They'll send you a notice telling you really need, you need to adjust the price. Yeah. yeah, so um, I've heard they don't do that anymore. Okay, number one. Number two, MSRP used to be um, a feature that was quite restricted, but I've seen it come back in some categories, so you may want to try it out and see if you yeah, can. Yeah, I have it right now. It just, oh, it's it's yeah, still so not coming up. It, it, usually it's like a two or three weeks it'll show and then it disappears and then I'll have to yeah. reset it or change the MSRP or, right. yeah, it just, I, the correlation on the works someone doesn't is uh, interesting. Yeah, if you could, it really depends on the niche. Yeah. yeah, if you drop the MSRP like every three weeks, a couple cents, you just play with it that way and see what happens. Yeah, that yeah, may work. Yeah. Yep. As long as it changes, you know, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so photography. Can't overemphasize enough. Oh, well, I guess we're, we made it through all the slides. <laughs> um, so photography, we can't over, we, Okay, it's us. We, we can't over emphasize <laughs> enough to invest, focus, and prioritize the main image. Um, so, why did Amazon patent one click shopping? One theory is because many buyers are impulsive after seeing a product where the key signal satisfies them, right? And it kind of makes sense. Um, review Amazon's requirement for a main image. So, they want to see um, 1,000 by 1,000. In terms of uh, width and height for pixels or resolution, 1000 by 1000 resolution, no props or text, white background only. You will see a lot of competitors who still have props, effects, and things in the background. Um, I will tell you this that, uh, like, especially in the supplement space, so um, you'll see some bottles in buy and see where there's like an orange splash behind it, like as if the bottle's thrown into, like, it's, it's to sex it up a little bit, to jazz it up. This is um, for the main photo, though, right? This is for the main photo, right? Yeah, All the, sec lifestyle. the secondary photos can have lifestyle, can have yeah. props, oh, okay. can, it, can yeah. have infographics. This is only for the main photo. Um, okay. So yeah, review Amazon's product for the main image. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But even shadows, do you consider shadows to not be white background only? I mean, I feel like that's like the far. I feel like, like that's like. Shadow. I feel like subjectively, that's still okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's reports. Yeah, there's reports that 
Amazon's algorithm is now intelligently scraping listings to see if they're violating the main image requirements. So, um, so I don't know, I've seen my competitors yeah. like, uh, or even things like they put a little like red ribbon in the corner, like, oh, yeah, 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 right, receive sale, or you know, stuff right. like that. Just like, how, like, no one's even enforcing. Or, <laughs> like, yeah, or they'll even put a little badge that looks like Amazon's choice yeah, badge that say yours. buyer's choice or Amazon's buyer's choice. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, <laughs> it's wrong. So, yeah. Nice. Amazon, is saying, Amazon is trying to go after them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So previously they were manually. Um, my listings two years ago got hammered by Amazon. They got pulled down. I think, I think we were pulled down maybe 20 times in a two week span. Wow. So they would pull our listings down. We try to resubmit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, they would give us a, handle, uh, a slap on the wrist um, for the, for an image. Pull the listing down. We upload it. Slightly different. They don't like it. They pull it down. It just went back and forth for two weeks. And finally, I just got sick and tired of it. So it's it's not universal, right? That this applies. A lot of sellers are doing it. They're abusing it. Um, I would not recommend that you guys do it. It's at, you, you can do it at your own risk, right. you know, as why you still can. Um, it's not going to completely shut down your account. It's not going to completely shut down your listing. You can always appeal to Amazon and bring it back. So it is worth trying if you're willing to try it. But I will tell you that the um, the back end, the Amazon scraping algorithms, they are they are mining these images now to see if, if it's the requirements or not. Okay. Um, okay, challenge, how many words is your picture worth? The more, the better. Okay, I don't mean in terms of actual words, but just what your <laughs> image conveys. Your main image, this is your main image, okay. Uh, succinctly and concisely convey as much info about your product to shoppers in your main image as possible. So convey the densest message possible while remaining completely compliant with Amazon's terms of service. This is an art form. So you got a main image, you have your product, right? How do you how do you have a substantial competitive appeal conveyed with your main image right off the bat? With no okay. background. With no background, with no text. Okay. Uh, do not cut corners in a main image. Invest in it. You get what you pay for, mostly. So now sure. you would invest in your pack product packaging. Um, I would put some effort into that, but in terms of conversions, you know, the main image is it to get people to buy your product. Well, like with your uh, the the mushroom thing that you showed earlier. Oh, if it's vitamins. Oh, if it's vitamins. Yeah, yeah. If it's, Sorry. Like, yeah, if it's a right. really cool package. Um, yeah. Um, so for yeah, so for a product where it doesn't make sense to because show the powder or the capsules, then sure. yeah, the, 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 the product packaging. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I would think that that would be a place where you could have. A lot more flexibility oh, yeah. while 100% acting within the guidelines because this right. is the picture of my product. Right. You know, right. and then when Nicole and Donnie about what's on the label right. or the color of the bottle or anything like that, because that's your product. Right. Right. Yeah. That can be a double um, duty. Really good for packaging and as well as for the product image. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh there's a, there's there are accounts I've worked on where they. Put up the product packaging as a main image, mm -hmm. and you can't even read what what the product is. Yeah, you know, it's just like are these? Yeah, is it you know are these toothpicks? Are these like, what, what what's going on here? And, but you don't see the toothpick. Toothpicks, you see the packaging. Right. But the words are so small in the thumbnail. Yeah, especially on mobile, it's like I don't know what this is. Can you when you zoom it up? Does it get any better? No, it, it, it doesn't get. Uh, mm -hmm. much you don't like that. The you don't want to have to get that. You know, you yeah, they should just look at it. Exactly. If I want it, exactly. I'm going to buy it. And if I don't, I'm not going to buy it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, just got it. Yeah. Okay. You want to reduce as much friction as possible to the buying experience. Hence the one click ordering. Um, the one click ordering is really satisfying when you drag it. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done that several so times. We got you. Oh, that felt so good. I don't know. Impulse buying. Usually, I'm like, always like contemplating if I should buy something. But yeah, yeah. When I do those, I'm like, what the hell is this? Especially, especially if it's got a green coupon on it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so photography, image quality. As an amateur smartphone photographer who gets mostly positive feedback for Instagram posts, I rarely post, but I get pretty positive feedback. And I'm very aware of, and 
I'm very aware that smartphone cameras are extremely capable nowadays. I have never used smartphone photos as Amazon main images, mm -hmm. and for the foreseeable future, and when I would never consider it. Why is that? Because when you zoom in on smartphone images, uh, especially at the 1500 by 1500 resolution or, or more, um, there's some dithering that takes place. There's some... Was that only if you use the digital zoom on the lens, though? No. If the lighting's not good enough, right? Um, if you're trying to do enhancements, if you're trying to sharpen, sharpening, if you try to sharpen a smartphone image and you try to zoom on it, believe me, like lots of these, lots of artifacts. I mean, I have your typical iPhone 10 and I, and you can get an app where you shoot it raw, you can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. It's, it's spot on. The only time I've ever heard an image with the dithering on the, uh, this newer smartphone mm -hmm. is if you do the digital zoom on the camera. Sure. And then take the picture. Right. Then you try and zoom in on that. You're right. better off just leaving it. Yeah. At it's yeah, don't, so. Don't use it the, so I've. The digital zoom. Right. Yeah, and so, zoom. right. So I've got a Google Pixel too. Right. It's pretty advanced. Sure. You know? um, if I were to take a image of a completely black surface, right, um, or a label that's mostly black, right, it's got some text on it, and I want to sharpen it, the black will start. There's going to be dots that get introduced into. It's not going to look pure black anymore. When you sharpen, when you do certain things to try to uh, manipulate the photo, post processing. Sure. Yeah. So phones are getting there. I mean, they're they're definitely. So I think that's there. like a twelve megapixel lens on there now. Yeah. I. I mean, I wouldn't at, think that there's too much loss. I I've looked at the photos I've taken and like I would never post my photos. Yeah, I mean, I can even show you the photos I've taken, and you guys can evaluate, oh, are they good or not, but, oh no, yeah. Because taking it with, um, for me, the way I see it is taking it with a digital camera, you can have options to manipulate it in the future. Mm -hmm. Whereas, maybe, the, so maybe the latest iPhones is almost there. It okay? seems like it is. But, um, The Pixel 3 is pretty good, too. It's pretty good, yeah. 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 For digital um, pictures, what resolution do you... Try for um, for digital Same pictures. Thing. It's it's fifteen hundred by 15, well for the pixel count right the fifteen hundred by fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just recently bought a. You can do some like really high res. You know, like. Yeah. So so I three thousand pixel image. Sure. Pictures. So I recently bought a Fuji XT three. It's the latest and greatest Fuji camera other than going to the $5,000 tier, okay? Then I bought a $1,000 lens and I went shooting. And um, the, sh the shots from my Google Pixel 2 just don't compare to it. Yeah, so I would say if you're really, really good at it, by all means, but as far as general advice to people who don't know what they're doing with smartphones, probably, avoid it and that's a huge <laughs> number of people. So if you, if you know, you gentlemen, if you know exactly how to dial it in, then by all means. My, my follow up question to that would be, um, why do you need it to be so high res? What's the purpose of it? It's not just high res, it's the, it's the color quality, it's the, um, the dynamic range, it's... Is, is there something that needs to be color accurate? Is that a big reason? It's not, it's just the ability to do some fine tweaks more easily on Amazon to, to post as a product image. I mean, because there are solutions for that. You can just do it like, yeah, I, since I got my iPhone, and since your typical iPhone 10, I have not used a digital camera. I've thrown it away, not looking back. <laughs> yeah. 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 It just does the job. What you need to do is just, just, it. it's just yeah. really good. So I, I don't know, maybe there's a, everybody has their reason, so I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you can definitely start, so, a lot of people who take smartphone photos, right, they'll take it in such a way where the lighting's not great, they'll, they don't know how to set it up properly. There's just a lot of issues with it, potentially, that people fall into. But again, for those who, if you guys know how to, you know, manage, you know, take a photo, like straight out of camera, SOC, or um, manipulate it after the fact, so that it looks very presentable on Amazon, then by all means. Yeah. Yeah. Do you take your own photos? I do not. Yeah. I do not. Yeah, I've, I've
struggle to find a qualified photographer that specifically understands like what's needed for Amazon. Yeah. So yeah, no, I'm still trying to find somebody who I can work with consistently. So I just was curious. Yeah. Um, it's been hard. I think going back and forth with yeah. photographers. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So there's one photographer I do use. I could. It's they're called ProductPhotography.com. Oh. As generic as their name sounds. Okay. Um, yeah, it's super generic. Oh, you start you this one thing. <laughs> they come up as the first organic result or the second in, in uh, Google search. If you search for Amazon product photography, you can send me your affiliate link. No, <laughs> <laughs> not like that. <laughs> uh, but they are costly, so it's sixty dollars for a standard shot, ninety dollars for what they call a hero shot, where they really do a lot so of stuff. So being no. Retouching, finishing. Minimal retouching and finishing. Okay, and ninety dollars with substantial retouching and finishing. Um, I will tell you guys to oh God, what's their name? There's a firm out of Los Angeles. And I'm drawing a blank. He also serve, he also shows up at the top of Google's results. I'm not gonna but I, I so offline I wanna bring it in. No, it's not local. It's yeah, it's um, it's just a matter of finding who works for you nationwide just to send your product to. Yeah, yeah. Um, product pho photography. They're based out of Las Vegas, so I've never met with them. I never, um, you know, walked into their offices or anything. anything. Yeah. If someone take pictures that are like they digitize it. They take it from all angles, mm -hmm. and then they can blow up and go any any resolution because it just keeps going. Yeah. Um, I forget what that's called. Those are th 3D renders, CAD renders? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. So if your product is conducive to CAD rendering, by all means. But if your product has fabric, if it's got some sort of texture to it, it's got a lot of complications and intricacies, then uh, a 3D render may be more costly um, initially, but it may be versatile because at least you have that model that can be rotated every which way in the future. Yeah. Has anybody looked at fiber or? That's where I started. Yeah, and yeah, I would not move again. Not really? <laughs> well, I went, I went cheap. That was my mistake. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've seen like 35 <laughs> bucks to like right. a couple hundred to thousand. Yeah. I'm at the point where I'm like, yeah. Did you say it's $60 per? Per standard, somewhat cleaned up shot, and then $90 for uh, a heavily post processed shot. Because on fiber, I mean, you can get it for five bucks, or you could go a little bit more, maybe thirty. Yeah, you know, five dollars. Yeah, five dollars is the cheapest. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it fiber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume you do you just ship them your product, and then they like right. I've right. also have tri I've also had tried to have my supplier do it as well, but that didn't go over well. And there's so, yeah. Uh, then I had a buddy do it for me, and that didn't. Trial and error. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, to your point, on the last slide, you said you don't pay it. Essentially, you get what you pay for. That's what I'm learning. So, yeah. 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 About 400 bucks for seven solid pictures, and so be it. Yeah. I would connect with someone at your employer who's in the graphics department who's doing the email on the side. Because I have relationships, and we can talk about that offline, but that's that would be one way to do it. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are those are the guys that do it in it day in day out. They've got all the equipment to sh to shoot it. Absolutely. Um, cool. Cool. I do have a kind of unrelated question. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I'm working on product protection, production, packaging, promotion, and on the protection side. If you have a product that you you think some people have a patent on. How do you go about getting hold of them? Because you're going to have to pay them royalties and all that kind of stuff. And is it worth it going that route? To look at people who have a patent? No, to, mm -hmm. to manufacture a product that's mm -hmm. not on the market. Mm -hmm. But people have put patents out saying, you know, like you they're in the process of doing it, but they haven't actually no, they've, they've it's patented. It. It's, it's already patented, but yes. they didn't yes. launch it. Yeah. They, they patented it, but they didn't launch it. It's just, hey, I have this great idea, but blah, 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 and then Tweak it. you can't do anything. You can't put it to market because if they find out, they can sue you and all that kind of stuff. So you, mm -hmm. so, so, so the 
protection part is really important right now, and that could cost a lot. So, like Eric was mentioning, tweak it, modify yeah. it a little bit, come up with your own design. But, but the problem is, is that the, that the one key product that has to be inserted into another product is the thing that they are patenting. Mm -hmm. And, and I can't tweak it. How much time do they have left on the patent? And is it utility or is it design? Utility. Utility. And, and it's how many much time years. Do you have? And there's more than one pe person has a patent on a similar product. So it's like, who do you pick? You may just reach out to them. It could be But someone. the problem is, how do you reach out to them? I mean, you, you see it uh, uh, like a patent information. The attorney is is that's listed on yeah, there. Yeah, there's attorney names. Reach out to the attorney. The inventor names, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. they don't put phone numbers or anything. Right, you just yeah. try to search and There's a, You know, there are addresses, but I would reach out to the there, attorney. There, is there like a database of who, whoever people contact people for all these patents? Yeah. PTO no. office has a searchable database. Of, yeah. of, of names? Of uh, information. It's, a, it's government, so it's, I've been it's there. information. I've been there, but I haven't seen any. Like, yes. how do you contact these people? No, no. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's just And I would get an attorney, you know, yeah, an attorney to help you with yeah. that. They have access to yeah. additional yeah. information. Yeah. I've got a good uh, patent attorney if you need one. <laughs> okay. Uh, I also, uh, there's a, a website called Up Council where you can put your proposal out and then people from around the country uh, submit their basic quotes, mm -hmm. you know, about what they can do for you. So it's pretty good. I was thinking going that route. But I'll talk to you. I'll find about that too. Okay. Because okay. I, I can't even get out the starting gate. Mm -hmm. If I, you know, because I can try to oh, come up with something. Yeah. Are they using it for the same purpose, the same intent? Because intent would, could be a differentiator. Yeah, they're not using it for anything. They're just, just, it's all just a pattern. But yeah, is it designed for a specific intent that's different from what you, you're planning to use it for? The exact same thing. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to move on a little bit here. I thought you were almost done. Um, oh, so this is one of the reasons. So, okay, so for casual smartphone users, um, you guys maybe have already, some of you have already read the next little point. They look de decent at casual clients, but will not hold up. Amazon has, seems to tweak the image curves and levels to their own proprietary taste. So greens will look fluorescent. Um, and we've seen this happen to quite a few listings. Not all listings, but quite a few. Uh, which sometimes accentuates blended portions of images producing banding, unwanted saturation. Do you guys know what this stuff means? Yeah, saturation. Generally, okay. saturation. Okay. Yeah. 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 Contrast. Yeah. 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 So when people look at it, they, it may, so with the you know with with a with a gradient, it doesn't look smoothly blended. It doesn't smoothly transition anymore. There's stripes in the gradient, yeah. like a gray gradient. So, um, so we've seen that happen. Um, okay. So the next one, white background only. The more extreme on the brightness scale your product is, the more difficult it is for your shoppers to see the product. I've sold white products before on a white background. Didn't convert. It was very 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 white. <laughs> you yeah. Do you just outline? You can outline. Shadow. Oh, shadow. You can do yeah, shadows. <laughs> or pick a different color of source. Yeah. <laughs> like, an off, like an off white. And make like it like a green yeah. white or something. Like an ice yeah. 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 Like more on the beige side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bad. bad. <laughs> products which are mostly white or black products. Okay. Um, if it's really black, then it's also very hard to see the contours, the features mm -hmm. on the product, right? Transparent or reflective, they're very, very hard and difficult to photograph, extremely hard, um, or something that produces significant glare. Um, black or very dark products would contrast nicely against dark backgrounds, but white backgrounds tend to blow out the subtle hues on dark products because the contrast is too high. So it's like saying, you know, this really, really white screen and you've got a black product on there. Your eyes have trouble focusing on mm -hmm. the black area, right? Because there's all this white that's just bombarding your eyes. So, a um, super paid photographer would be handy so because they would automatically know something. Yeah. Right. The fluorescence? What's that? You said that the green starts to look funny. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen that happen, yeah. Okay. yeah okay. In some of, our, some of our images. Or the clients have shot it. I don't know where they shot it from. 
and we, we just see these really crazy artifacts and images. <laughs> like it's from, I don't know, the year 2000s. <laughs> the early 2000s. Yeah. Not, the, not the current 2000s where there's all these um, advanced cameras and iPhones and stuff. Um, uh, maximize the usage of the square shaped image count, uh, canvas. Utilize both edge to edge and corner to corner. Okay, so that means if, if we pretend this is the image canvas, right, and try to try to leverage, depending on the shape of your product, try to leverage as much of corner to corner or edge to edge as possible. Okay, the reason why is um, if your product is only about yay big and there's this whole background. All right, two things before I back up. One is, if you're gonna have white brown, background from the image and it's gonna be a white background, okay, it's gotta be pure white. I forgot the hex code, is it pound FFF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, yeah. If it's FFF, FFE, I don't know if I mentioned this before. If it's FFF, FFE, there's gonna be an issue. The reason why it is, in search results, and if, if you got a product like this, right, and this happens in some categories. So typically you wanna try to go edge to edge. But if you're too lazy, okay, so you've got your product here and you've got all this white space. Um, if there's all this white space, then in search results, Amazon will automatically crop the white space down so your image looks zoomed in to search results, mm -hmm. okay? If your background is slightly off, FFF, FFE, Amazon is unable to crop white space. So your product looks this small. So on mobile, you'll look like this, whereas everybody else looks bigger. Mm. That's another conversion tactic, okay? So, um, yeah, so do what so you So you want to stick to a pure hex white on your background right. because of the way that Amazon's AI optimizes images right. based on where it's being displayed at any given time. Correct. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah. If both aspects of the square shape image cams cannot be maximized, decide you decide which angle allows the product to take up the most area of pixels inside the image canvas. Okay. There is a theory now that um, in mobile search results, you know, it's not a theory, it's actually demonstrated and proven that the whites, if you um, if you have a skinnier object, you want to orient to it so it's skinnier up and down instead of flatter like this, left and right. Because in mobile search results, um, if you have more content on your listing, you know, the pricing and MSRP, how much you save, badges, blah, 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 the Amazon will do this to your individual listing search results. It, it's taller image, so it gets, it's not stretched, but it's stretched in ratio, but it lays out all the uh, elements for your listing. So that helps push um, the other competitors uh, results and search results down and up. Okay, mm -hmm. so product orientation and tilting inside image. Uh, some data to suggest tilting products suggest lead force product title then flow supply box. We talked about that earlier. Okay, um, that's it. What kind of service do you provide for the mailing status? Um, I just Yeah, I provide pretty much gener generically just Amazon marketing services mm -hmm. for PPC and listing optimization. So end to end from the yeah. talking through the process, right. we'll have people listen list and optimize this and right. what kind of the whole process. Right. Okay. Do you have group people? Do you have any other specialized tools that can really help the process inside the IA machine learning? And uh, you mean for Amazon sellers? Amazon like, sellers. Yeah, so um, Viral Launch is good. Uh, Seller Tools is also good. Absolutely. Healing 10 is okay. How about um, affiliate? How about What's that? Affiliate. Affiliate? Yeah. Um, from YouTube videos. And Oh, you mean like influencers? Yeah, influencers. No, really. Influencers, but you might you add them on YouTube. Right? Um, you mean like uh, people who are affiliates as, to use as a marketing tool? or yeah, marketing tool. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely a, 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 you know, an option to help you market your product. Yeah. 
you just have to find the right YouTube influencer to do so. And somebody like Mike probably knows more about that. Um, we can speak to it a little more. About You're using influencers? Yeah, do you know? Um, or? It's, it's relatively inexpensive if you find the right person. There was a kid, I don't remember what his name was, but he basically, he wants to become an internet influencer. And this kid's like 13, 14 years old. But he did a video where he built um, like one of those dead mouse rabbit ear helmets. Mm -hmm. And he has a very cool um, editing process that he went through with this video to demonstrate how he built this thing. And this is kind of the video that he puts together where he's like, I'm going to be an influencer. If you send me your product and like 20 or 25 bucks, he'll do this video for you. Um, it's not the kind of thing that's ready for television, mm -hmm. but it's more than it's appropriate for using on like YouTube. Right. And if you have like a brand page and you mm -hmm. want to frame that in or put it on like a Facebook product page. Um, and that's just one example of a number that are out there where there are people who want to be influencers in a specific niche right. um, or maybe for a relatively broad spectrum of products um, and they don't charge an awful lot of money for doing this. Sorry. Um, so, product reveal, ultimately, if you have a blue product you want, let's say, 10 and 30 product reveal on YouTube. Okay. If you do find the person that can right. do that for you, so it is really a service for that, or do you just have to go out there and find the visual and say, hey, I, you know, have this incentive, then you do this for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely that was hell the problems. Yeah, thank for the buck on that. It's it's pretty inexpensive. Is that in terms of getting reviews here? Yeah, let's say you buy you sell this camera and right? you share the phone and you won't you really know about it, yeah. obviously, right? Yeah. So you want to put in your tool like let's say twenty people who can view it. Yeah. Not necessarily that it ruins it. Just like a regular, you know, Joe Schmo reviewers to view it. Give them their you can give them uh, Transcript. Yeah. They can read it out, or they can do a genuine review, and you edit it for them. So that I mean, there's a lot of different options. The one thing I think, um, sorry, I'm not liking your name. I'm, oh, Howard. I've been like a thousand times. Yeah. All right. Um, I think you talked about a couple months ago, but I don't know if you were here. But um, you I don't might, know. yeah, you, you might want to. Some people do Facebook groups, so that's one option. Um, they'll just look on Facebook. But the problem with that is with Amazon and Amazon, is very robust and their their algorithms are always going out screaming things. So, for example, say that you were to get a group of people like this together and say, "Hey, I'm gonna give you guys this product. I want you guys to go to Amazon and please review it for me." If all of these people here went to Amazon at the same time, it would the algorithm would be like, "Oh." All these people from this IP address location is pinging this one page. There may be some potential effort going on here. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing that you just might want to look out for when it comes. Right. To that's a great point. That's a yeah. point. Uh, and the same thing goes for Facebook groups. Now they have people who are dedicated to like going to those group pages and just looking right. and making sure that people aren't doing anything shady. So if you can get around all of that, then you're going. But just you know, you just want to. Tread carefully when it comes to stuff like that. Because, Absolutely. Um, that Amazon, Amazon algorithm is always just looking around, trying to find a way to give you a headache. But if you can get through that, then it's just a little bit. Do you have any statistics? I read somewhere that 80% of sales are from uh, buy box purchases. Buy box? Well, well, sales do come, they, they have to be made through the buy. You mean like buy box versus the one click order? Mm -hmm. I actually don't. I mean, there's. I mean, someone owns the buy box. At well, the time, I mean, you, can, you can when you do the purchase something from someone who doesn't own the buy box. Is that what you? Right, going to a real world right. seller. I mean, yes, I would say that's sellers. probably true. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, you don't see many people that go unless they're looking to maybe buy something used or something like that. That go through and look at every <clears> single seller. Yeah, whoever has the buy box at the time is probably doing the sale. Yeah. For my box, though, that's more for, I mean, we're looking, with photography, we're looking at private label, right? right? So, yeah, I mean, that's your own. You, yeah. may, you may see, yeah. PC, yeah. 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 And that's the key. If you're selling something that's common. If you're doing, like, a retail, I mean, you're like, you're like, like, retail, 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 retail
UTC code, and, yeah. and there's even a way to be exempt from it. But yeah, that means you have to have your own private label. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can still be white label as long as you have a UPC, a unique UPC code for it when you list the item. What is the difference with this? What is like a white label? You don't, it's just no name brand. Mm -hmm. Oh, just generic? Yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. And you can put your own brand and product label on it. On it, yeah. yeah. Like a sticker or something. Or like embroidery that. or whatever. Okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Hey, regarding the uh, look hole you mentioned that Amazon like, patched up, what are the like, implications of that? So Amazon like, patched up like, the JSON. Um, like hack. Oh, that other folks were. Yeah. Um, yeah, people were, were able to pull the uh, search volumes per keyword, mm -hmm. monthly search volumes. And that's no longer the case anymore. Does that affect how like viral launch will like, provide services? Viral launch over Jungle Scout? Yeah, so, yeah, so they still provide search volumes, but it's uh, search volume values, but it's extrapolated from historic values that they've already saved off into their database. It's, estimate, it's, estimates, it's, estimates, it's just estimates. Yeah. They're, yeah. yeah. So is that going to be? Because I know Viral Launch has like the um, I forgot what they're all called. There's the one where you click it and you're on the Amazon page, and then it kind of tells you market intelligence. The market intelligence, yeah. and then they also have the keyword research. Yeah. That's the one where you could type in a keyword, and it mm -hmm. gives you other keywords that people may be searching for. Yeah. Right. And that's right. the one I was talking about where oh, okay. that, because that one, it tells you like the volume of which, how much people are searching for that on Amazon. Right, um, right. So does the, the hack that you're talking about, does that affect both of those? Or it affect like Jungle Scouts um, extension as well? Oh, which which hack was? The, the, the oh. JSON, the one that they closed. Oh, oh well, yeah, yeah. It would, yeah. So basically everybody was, Access in a JSON hack. So much mm -hmm. tools, Firewatch. I think Helium 10 also has a search volume in it. Um, I forget. I don't use Helium 10 too much. Yeah. I use it a lot, but I, I, really, but I really don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I should probably get, you know, how do you get the sales volume from yeah. Amazon? You, you get it from the tools as they're uh, estimating it, like Garrett's saying. There's no real hard data. So you can, and Amazon doesn't mm -hmm. share that. Mm -hmm. so yeah, they're usually tight. They're actually, Amazon tends to be more tight lipped than not about the data. In the back end, you had mentioned something about using PPC or like CPC to estimate. Oh, PPC campaigns. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but that's already after someone, you've invested in your product. Right? You know, you can yeah. you can make a listing and start a PPC campaign. You don't have to actually sell anything, to my understanding. Is it's 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 just to test mm -hmm. test uh, keywords. I don't think it shows up until your product is there, right? Yeah, because um, you're going to need impressions. Green impressions, so you can have a listing that I mean, maybe you set it up as a fulfilled membership, yes, FBM, right? right, right. Oh, it's a blank right. listing, it doesn't have oh, photos, yeah. and you put right. in some fake title, right? But you can still see whether, well, I mean, it's not obviously not optimized, but mm -hmm. if people are clicking, you know, that's just that's just what I was trying to get at because you had mentioned, you know, I just don't understand how you would get that data, yeah, 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 because you have to make the decision on whether or not I want to go for this product. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah. two VPN at that time when you're when you're already certain PPC. So yeah, you can definitely create an FBM listing. Um, it should probably be optimized, right? So you can get impressions so that Amazon's ad option can start uh, determine, and you can also create video campaigns and start determining if anybody's buying it. Um, but in this day and age, FBM listings don't get uh, impressions. Uh, nearly as much as FBO listings do, you know, um, everybody's a prime, a prime filter. Right, yeah. 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 The many keyword searches are in that top section where it has a description. Uh, the main keyword search meaning the product title or? Yeah, yeah, and all the description that goes along with it. That's, that's all keyword stuff that the seller puts in there, right? Um, yeah, on, on product listing? Yeah. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. people, with their searches and, and everyone oh, yeah. points to that based upon what they have in there, right? Other than their keyword search. How does how, how the keyword right, search right. And, and the product listing? Yeah, you can show a product listing and mm -hmm. I'll share I'm talking about. Right. How, yeah, that's, how does both work? That's that's the part portion about indexing and ranking, 
right? So yes, you're right. You gotta you gotta definitely straighten your listing out first. Because if the listing, those are keyword search words also, right? The listing has keyword searches in it, correct? Yeah, or it has some keywords that people will search for, yes. Right. So you, it's a, one way to maybe get a good idea of keywords is look at the, all the ones that your competitors are using to see which words they're, cause <clears> over, <throat> over 10, 15, 20, 30 competitors, what keywords they're using and say, okay, that's they're all using this. Right. That right. can maybe help you pinpoint. Yeah, so that's why I love Pure Intent because I use the reverse asymmetry search. Uh, right. And that, yeah. what that does is exactly what you're saying is. Who did? Helium 10. Oh. I've heard good things about that one. Yeah, it's, yeah, I call them like the Android of, <laughs> of like tools because it's not pretty necessarily, but it, I, I find it pretty effective. But I mean, you just put in an ASIN and it'll give you competitors who have similar listings and very similar titles and all kinds of data. And what, and what I've done historically is I've like created a, a matrix and I'll look at uh, 10 different listings, or the top 15 different listings and what or what are all those keywords do those 15 listings have in common and I can kind of hone in and create like a an initial like exact match PVC campaign of like the most powerful keywords for that niche or most hyper relevant that are yeah. Based on what you're saying. seeing from what the competitors are showing on their listings. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean yeah, I essentially go off like the ranking, I guess. That, that's the kind of a ranking for each keyword. That's right how you get started, but then you, you like you said, once a week, once a month, you, would, you change it to see how if there's a better word. Okay. Or you you just it's more so investing more in what's working and less in right. what's okay. not working. Yeah. yeah. Unless something works, then you go okay. <laughs> it works. Yeah. If it works, you pile money into it. If, if it doesn't, you probably back off or consider it. Okay. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely do re reverse ASIN searches, and you should, mm -hmm. um, yeah, to add them into the mix. And going further into what you were saying about mm -hmm. looking at the other competitors, I've even heard of people, they look at their competitors, the top ones, mm -hmm. and not just the keywords, but then they'll look at, okay, how long is the title? If everybody's got short titles that are at the top, well, they're gonna do a short title. If they've got long, they're gonna do long. How are their pictures? They're going to follow, they're going to look at what the top ones are doing Remember, and just try to yeah, improve yeah. on whatever they're doing. Right. Yeah, that, that goes into the listings, uh, competitive appeal. Yeah, see how you can, see how your offer can stand out yeah. um, compared to everybody else. Yeah. One of the things I know, I'm a prime shopper for a long time. One of the first, first things I do is I look at the, the one star. When I'm look, looking at any particular product, I go to one star, one star, one star. And if there's a lot of bad one stars, you know, where there, there's really trash in product that can't last very long, I don't even look at the four or five stars. I just move on. You guys do that? Yeah, yeah. I do. I look at the bad reviews first. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, Can I what they're doing wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> I took it one step further and I just take a percentage and look at the one-star review versus the overall. Right. If it's at a certain percentage, you immediately know it's missing shit. It's like, for example, if it's at 10%, like, yeah. it's like, oh, it's not that good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, I was looking for something and I found reviews of products that were unrelated to it. The sellers. So they had hacked it some kind of way and it was just talking about crazy stuff. So I'm like, these have nothing to do with this screen protector I'm looking to find. Oh, yeah. I've, yeah. I've searched some of those too. And I think the reviews are, they just pulled them from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so usually that's an old listing with a product that um, mm -hmm. a previous seller wanted to stock out of, and then they so they find it. They basically the trick is they just go to Google and they search Amazon unavailable, and it gives them a bunch of listings. Then they find that listing and then they will list. Uh, their products. How can you take over a that's listing? Be, that's, that's illegal. The <laughs> they have all these regulations in place, but then no, someone can actually it. take over a old listing. Yeah, how is that even possible? Yeah, that's why you'll see a listing that says this toilet paper is great. And the next thing is this screen protector is great. <laughs> the next thing is my dog loves to eat these. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is all, all the same reused many, many times. Those yeah. are three different products. But it's not the same listing. Right? So that's right. why you don't want to review this completely out of context. Because yeah, because okay, someone is because so, hijacked it on the listing. Because because of those four signals I was talking about, that's right? Crazy. Two of them are uh, average product rating and number of reviews, right? So if somebody else stops selling something because of the margins decreased, vanished, yeah. and then nature something, so they're gonna they're gonna run, they're not gonna care about the listing anymore, right? But then someone else um, will pick up on that listing and just. Start with 800 reviews with four and a half stars. That's probably mm -hmm. what the one I found. Wow. Because yeah. when I put yeah. it on Facebook, I'm like, why is there a dress and pencil? Like, there's just all kinds of different types reviews of Reviews for, right, for that one for listing. That one listing. Can, right. can I hijack my own listing, so to speak, meaning change the product when I run it out of the current and if I don't plan to bring that back? If this video is recording, for the record, I've done that. Okay. Uh, He's going to cut that out. <laughs> Maybe. 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 We'll do some selective edits. <laughs> we have to. Fee. But, Poor fee. Oh my but, God. But I, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, the reassign the ASIN? So you just basically basically introduce a new product and put the SSU of the old product on it and then just FBA it. Right? Yeah, it's just a matter of that. Or if you have a UPC label, then just you don't even have to pre-print this new product with UPC label. Just take every labels and then print it. And, yeah. But the same space, the same listing, the address, the is that the same or you just have to you create a brand new so I'm thinking about someone hijacking a listing, yeah. an old listing that's unavailable. So the high, yeah, the people who, as you would say, hijack an old listing, they would, they have access to the listing. They're able to change the content on the listing, images, the you know, textual content, everything, and then they're and they're FBA. How do they get the, the logon information? Yeah, to do that? You don't need a login information. Okay, so I mean, let me back up a step. Let me back up a step. So. All content and listings, everything, all assets that you submit to Amazon are property of Amazon. They're not property of your brand. Right. Okay. The privacy policy probably says that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. So everything you submit, um, even I, I'm going to I'm going to go on a limb and say this: even everything Apple submits to Amazon for their images, their listing. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So Amazon owns all that. So Apple owns their assets on Apple.com, but as far as assets on Amazon, Amazon owns them. Okay, so they get to control and dictate the rules. Mm -hmm. So if there's an older listing that goes obsolete, right? Um, if it's not brand registered, right? If there's no restrictions on it, then it's free for all. It's, think of it this way. Um, I don't know if you guys have experienced this. You probably experienced it, Melissa, maybe to a certain extent. But if you're if you have a listing, if you have your own listing, you may have experienced piggybackers. Okay, um, don't know if you guys have experience with this, but sometimes the piggybackers have changed an image of yours or some content. So, so, so the same thing is happening. Just remove Garrett from the picture. Garrett stopped selling on that listing. So those same people are still coming in and finding listings to piggyback off of. But this listing doesn't have a you know a de facto primary seller anymore. 
I guess I didn't know that piggybackers had permissions to change yeah, your I thought, place. you know, yeah. your login and all of the content that you listening. produce is designated to your user account. So if you register for brand registry, brand registry. then you have That's some controls to kick off piggybackers. Yeah, okay. it's like a new yeah. thing that they added, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's relatively it's relatively newer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you created a, a generic listing mm -hmm. and you just put your product up, then it's a free for all. Okay. Like you can have other sellers on that listing alongside yourself. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I do. All I mean, if you think about it, theoretically speaking, from Amazon standpoint, it's it's a marketplace. So like, mm -hmm. a few months ago, up until a few months ago, I well, multiple people can sell Apple products. I wouldn't say everybody can but multiple authorized people can. Now, nobody can anymore, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's right. Um, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Because brands, brand brand brand. Brand. Right, but specifically for like the example of the album. Did they kick all the repair shops off too? I think they did. Like they had, yeah, they like people had- Apple can sell Apple right. on Amazon. I want to say Like some people had hundreds of thousands of dollars of inventory of that's Apple nice. products, and they had 30 days. Mm -hmm. To get off Apple's listings. Right. Wow. Okay. Wow. So it's a so, brand thing. Like if you're selling bad products of Apple, they don't know where you got them from. It's a, a, a brand, a negative association right. with Apple. Right. With that so, like, but it was only it, w it was going on for a number of years until recently, right? Mm -hmm. So take that and and apply that to ourselves. Why did start cracking down? I think maybe I, I I don't know the details behind that, but maybe Apple finally pitched some sort of. <laughs> I don't know. There's probably something behind the scenes. Maybe, yeah. who knows? Maybe, maybe Tim Cook threatened to, <laughs> to do the Birkenstock, right? And say, okay, we won't sell. We won't sell on your marketplace anymore or something like that. Yeah. But nobody cares if Birkenstocks is selling. <laughs> but, um, is it true that you do need manufacturers' approval to sell branded products? Yeah. That's I guess I'll about some people that makes things, and just recently from a fairly successful Amazon seller. I've heard that you could get away with it, that you may get a legal letter, but that you could still oh, well, I mean, sell it or something. But is then, it like the one-off or like actually have any products on it? Um, I mean, just I to be able to sell it, period. I mean, I see if it's hard work. Retail or not, it's a time. They have to get permission in some sense. I don't know what the process is, but. So many years ago, I sell the health products. You sell them? Dell And I got to a point that they'll contact me and say that you you kind of create a you know a market out there that's they not allowed to sell for that price. Okay. Because I find a way to be more competitive on price. Oh right. And, uh, yeah. Otherwise they work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is I have that's all I have now. Mm -hmm. And they say, Oh well you can't sell it because it's gonna offline you know. Yeah. Right. And I can't sell online. And that was Dell who approached that you? That was Dell was like okay. 10 years ago. Hmm. When people all were still on eBay. Okay. That's why I did now. So I'm wondering. But I still need to undercut the other to authorize dealers. I don't know. $150. Yeah, if you got a better price than me, we got a problem. I <laughs> <see that. laughs> yeah. Yeah. feel like it was my friend. <laughs> so it wouldn't have been a problem if it wasn't for price? That's I, I I think that's why it works because they they send me that rather than because sometimes people will pay a premium just to get it in two days and I have right. to go out right. to so get it. Is is if, you, if you sell it like that, yeah. the the product doesn't yeah. have the warranty. Yeah, I've heard that too, especially for like yeah. electronics yeah. or software yeah. even. Because mm -hmm. usually software is not mechanical. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to resell Tory Birch. You know, and I sell it for a hundred dollars more than what it is in the store. Supreme, but dude, when I went back to China a couple months ago, every uh -huh. other person, I swear, seven hundred million people were wearing Supreme. <laughs> Why? Not crazy. Like, Why though? The dads were wearing Supreme. <laughs> the grandpa, the babies. <laughs> I'm like. Do you guys even know what Supreme is? No. No. Well, since we're starting, the Supreme is the epitome of the perfect clothes and marketing. Like, who's that master of the market? They created our clothes. Now you have to sell it for it. It's a brand. Now, how do you know that you are the epitome of the perfect clothes? Because I'm like, 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 I'm like,
from weird red sport. bottom dress shoes. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Just yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Everybody yeah. had it. Some of the guys. Knock off Gucci, uh, Louis. Louis Vuitton. Yeah. 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 Where are you from? Yeah. Okay. Um, from Vietnam. Pictures of okay. like fresh. What part? Like, yeah. Up top, yeah. down yeah. the middle. Yeah. I'm the middle. In the but middle. I'm a, I was going to be the middle. Okay. I all vote all the way. Okay. I've been to Hanoi. I've been to. Oh, awesome. Ho Chi Minh. Are you going to go to Ho Chi Minh City, Ho Chi Minh City, Love it, yeah. People from Ho Chi Minh, yeah. All those people are schoolers. Saigon is well-known. Is what? It's well-known name. Yeah, that's the original name. Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh City is the official. Official. Yeah, like that's what you see on the maps. Yeah. But everybody calls it Saigon. Right, Saigon. All right. All righty. I think it's about time. My yep. Way to go, Howard. All right. Howard. Way to go, everybody. Way to go, everybody.